Oh, it looks like we're recording. Hey, everyone, it's Gordon Einstein, your Dubai resident crypto blockchain attorney, event organizer. It seems uh, I want to welcome onto the show this Saturday morning, my buddy Colin Fitzpatrick. Um, it's I normally don't record shows on a weekend, but it just worked out this way. So it's going to be a casual show. Colin, how are you? Great. I'm fantastic. Good morning and great to be here. Sorry, we couldn't get this organized. We've been trying for a while, but we've, we've done it now. It's okay. Everything happens like it should. If you if you believe in that stuff, so it's okay. I don't. I've known you for a while, but the, you know what's neat about these shows is I get the chance to like formalize my knowledge of you. Um, yeah, you're a very good public speaker. Um, I think the accent helps. Maybe you buy oh, it does accent, it. That's actually your accent, and you know <laughs> you, you got an engaging, charismatic personality. You're you're involved in a lot of things. You sure end up a moving target. Um, before we started recording, we went over some of it, but let, let, let's kind of give it a little bit of background on you, just so the audience knows who you are, and then we'll kind of plot forward. Is that okay? Sure. So so I'm I'm Colin Fitzpatrick. Um, I am Irish. I'm from Dublin in Ireland, but I've been in Dubai about, I think it's about six years now. Uh, I was there for five years. I left for a year. I was living in Brazil for uh, where my wife is from, and it just got me closer to the USA time zone where my business was at the time. And now I'm just delighted to be back in Dubai, and it was great to see you the other day at your event, which was a great success, and I'm sure I'll be at another one. Um, Are we on Tuesday? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, sure, why not? I don't know. This is recorded. <laughs> yes, Gordon, I'd love to come. <laughs> I haven't thought about it yet. I was like, yes, right uh, 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 for you, Gordon, I will be there, of course, absolutely. Oh, thank um, you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, it was a very good event, and I really liked it, and I, I definitely want to come some more. Cool, but... Um, uh, so yeah. What's your education? What's your what's your career path? So I uh, studied kind of business, finance, that sort of stuff. Where uh, I've been 20 years in big tech companies. So I've worked for Oracle for a really long time. I also worked for Salesforce, HubSpot, Dell. Uh, I was working for Oracle, came over here, got a transfer. I think I'm basically made redundant in the middle of COVID, which sucked. Uh, I've been in crypto since 2017, you know, rode that beautiful wave of uh, of the 2017 bull run and then and then crash afterwards um a massive bitcoin advocate like huge you know i'm i'm, I'm all in i really am i'm i'm a, I'm a true uh, i'm a true bitcoin guy um and uh i suppose one of the things i started a blockchain project about three or four years ago oh uh, it was right at the time of the metaverse and nft craze just totally taken off and we were doing concerts in the metaverse. So, you know, as everything was going online, COVID, we were doing concerts. Um, we worked with Snoop Dogg, Alicia Keys, Robin Thicke, a few others. It was a crazy, amazing time. We launched a token. We got it to a $300 million market cap. So that was an amazing experience. But then obviously FTX, Celsius, all the others came along. Uh, the market for NFTs and metaverse died a very, very quick death. And, um, but it was great. It was really cool. Uh, after that, I jumped straight into AI and Can I pause it? you're like, you're dropping gems. No, no. <laughs> the metaverse never appealed to me, but yeah, to just because I'm a loser. So, so no, is there something there? Am I missing the book? Well, okay. So this is a good conversation to have. Let's spend a bit of time on it. Um, the metaverse came around reasonably quickly but you know people have built been building digital worlds for 10 plus years okay um when the technology advanced a little bit and you've got uh you've got these guys that are now building really good good quality worlds essentially and you're putting things in them and it's fun um but what it really took off was when mark zuckerberg said uh, i'm changing the name of facebook to meta because metaverse is the future of the internet and everyone just went okay before that, I was out there like trying to raise money and I would say metaverse and people would look at me like I had three heads. As soon as Mark renamed it, the money just started flowing in because everyone went, okay, right, that's it. You know, we're in it. And they kind of got it. They went, you know, certain things are going to be in digital environments. They went, certain things are, you know, still quite good in a uh, online place and you can enjoy an entertainment experience with your friends across the world with a headset and maybe one of these, you know, uh, 3D ones. Um, I think that what happened was is I experienced or tested or spoke to dozens, if not a hundred plus different metaverses. 
there was never really one that I kind of got up on a Saturday morning and went back in to have a play around. Now, I'm a little bit older, okay? I'm not a teenager. Um, I'm also not a gamer. But if you think about it from a different perspective, Metaverse has a funny definition. It depends. The one, the one versus we think of are blockchain-based and all that sort of stuff. But you can also think about games like Roblox, uh, as metaverses or any of the games that a lot of kids play in because it's a world and you can build things. And I found that most of those metaverses just didn't have it. They were just a big empty box with nothing there. And sure, we could put on a concert and people will come and they'll watch it and they'll leave an hour later and that's it. But very, very little, no one had any success with it, you know? Now, turning that around, do I think it was absolutely bullshit? No, I do not because I believe in the future technology. Um, I, la I, I think metaverse is now a dirty word. And I like to think of it as the immersive internet, okay? Now, another thing that sort of came with a flash and quickly died was the new Apple um, Vision Pro, okay? Yeah, they so brought out... This is my question. Go, go on. Yeah. So the, the, they brought out this ridiculous piece of equipment costing $3,500. And I wrote about this. Uh, I wrote on LinkedIn a lot at the time. And I was like, listen, this is not a consumer product. This is, you know, a product for developers to understand the possibility of, of, of where, okay, because this is the, I, I said, listen, you know, this is the future of computing, but we are currently at the brick sized mobile phone stage of things. You know, it's no one walks, no one wants to walk around with a brick on their face. It's just ridiculous. I believe that in probably five years, maybe sooner, I don't know you will get a pair of glasses just like this and you will put them on and I will see text and I will see screens and I will see Gordon sitting on my couch. And at that stage, we will have an immersive internet. And at that stage, the sort of metaverse can come back. It's just that it's just not really... Is it yeah. a fully immersive environment as in you're no longer in yours or is it an augmented environment with useful avatars and information it just means that what you are seeing your peripheral vision so i can see from up here to down here to over there to over there okay um it needs to augment data text graphics information entertainment whatever it is on top of that so gordon maybe in 10 years time when you move into your new mansion okay there will just be a room with a blank wall because there's no need to have a TV anymore because it's built into our glasses and, and it takes up the full size of the TV. Or like the, um, how do I say this, the, the Vision Pro, you know, you could turn on video mode and it's like being in a cinema and it takes up your entire vision. But for that, you need to wear this massive thing on your face. And I just don't ever see that being a thing, you know? It, it? Yeah, I have one of the other ones. I have the... Uh, Meta Quest 2. I've used it about three times, you know? Uh, you say brick. Is it heavy? Or does... Uh, it, 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 it's... Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing weighs a few pounds. You know, it's it's not something you wait for a, wear for a, a period of time. It's fine for a few minutes. It's a great kind of cool experience for a little while, and my son had great times with it, and you can go on a roller coaster and blah, blah, blah. But do I want to walk around my house with it on? No, I do not. You know what I mean? So... Well, look, they will shrink this technology down to be a fraction of what it is, and it will go in a normal pair of glasses. And here's the thing. We don't need this completely immersive, you can't see anything else experience. I just want to, you know, have a little bit of additional information. And for me, the most important thing, and I, I used to talk about this a lot, is this. We need to kill this. Keyboards suck, okay? So the advent of AI or Gen AI and specifically um, uh, NLP, which is sort of the the how we recognize voices. Okay. Now we can talk to AI in any way and it understands us. Previously, you had to give very specific examples to Alexa. And even when you did it the same as last time, it would get it wrong. Those days are gone. Computers can understand us and we can understand them just as naturally as humans. What is the best form of communication? It's not typing. 
it's talking. We always will choose to, me and you have a conversation if we're standing in front of each other. Okay, if we're, you know, is somewhere noisy and we're typing and blah, blah, blah. But so the way I look at it is that we're going to go over the next couple of years into a stage where we're going to use voice an awful lot more when you can. You can't always, but when you can. Um, and then, you know, you'll have this little pair of glasses and, you know, these, what we're going to talk about later is these digital agents are coming and you're going to have a virtual assistant that is going to be as smart as a really smart executive virtual assistant, be able to go and do all the things for you. And you'll tap on your glass and you'll go, Hey, you know, um, send that document to Gordon, the one I put on my desktop yesterday, you know, named presentation. And, uh, you know, also tell him that the, the also attach the notes to the call I had this morning or whatever it is. So that to me is where everything is going in terms of, um, you'll have it in your glasses, you'll have it in your watch, whatever it is, your glasses will, will just display some important information. So you won't take your phone out of your pocket to check the notification. It'll just whiz past your eye. You can ask your thing. Okay, no, hang on. Reply to that guy and say this, whatever it is. That's kind of what I'm really excited about coming in the next couple of years. Wow. Interesting. The, the, you know, the, 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 what, I remember Google Glass. Yeah. And I remember getting annoyed when someone wore it to, there's, there's always that question, like, am I being recorded? Like, what are right. You know, it's obnoxious. And it's funny. I was actually at a breakfast with a friend and he had glasses with a little thing on the side. I'm like, are you recording? I said, no, it's actually a, a finder thing because this guy loses his glasses all the time. And I was like, well, I need, I need one of those. The, yeah. there's, it's, somehow, I don't think with that Apple, Google goggles, whatever the hell they were, I, I didn't get the impression of being recorded. Uh, maybe because they're so obviously for the wearer, maybe. Yeah. But there was, it, it, it looked like the, it, it looked like the physical, you know, I always differentiate between the, the screen future and the, and the physical future. Like, you know, we're, we got lots of screen future things we can do on our computers, but that, to have our environment be futuristic as well, like drones mm-hmm. and flying cars and robots and walking around and all that other stuff. It, it yeah. like an artifact from the physical future, but it, it, it didn't, I mean, did they pull it from the market? Is it still being sold? Like what's going on with it? Are you talking about Google Glass? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm talking about Apple's whatever you call it. Apple. Um, I believe they just sort of killed their plans for a Gen 2. I mean, it's just, look. They have some unbelievable in that technology in there. They have like, I don't know, four of the most powerful processors. And and the people who reviewed it said it was insanely impressive. You know, it, it really was. And you can you can click your fingers like this to to do things. And you just look at something and it knows. And all of that requires a massive amount of processing power and technology. They'll strip it out and make a lighter version of it. And they'll just put it into a pair of glasses. So... What's interesting is what you said about the Google Glass. That came out about 10 years ago. And it was a great idea, but it was a little ahead of its time. But, it, you know, socially, I think people went, whoa, hang on a second. You mean someone's walking around in this and they could be recording me and I don't know. No, 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 no. And then everyone just went, no, nah, I'm not having that. And it failed. Guess what? Last year, uh, Meta released a pair of sunglasses, extremely like these ones, um, yeah, with ray ban and there's there's a there's a camera up here and up here. I've I've read the reviews. I really want to get a pair, but I'm not too sure if they're going to suit me. But guess what? They came out. It did exactly the same thing. No one batted an eyelid. I think times are changing. People are understanding now that you know you're just kind of gonna have to deal with the fact that you're going to be recorded. And there's another topic that's really um, uh, fascinating to me. Okay, um, you you are using a. Um, a meeting assistant right now. Is it Fireflies or is it? Yeah, it's okay. Read.ai. Read.ai. Okay, so I, I'm a big fan of these, okay? And um, when I started using them, I would explain to everyone that it's going to be recording. And only one person ever told me to turn it off. Only one. And everyone's kind of used to that now. And it's fun unless we're talking about something sensitive, okay? Um, but now what they're doing is they're bringing out these little devices, and there's one called the the the, the limitless pendant, and there's another one called Tab by a guy called Avi Schiffman, and it's a, a thing you wear around your neck, and it's a pendant. It's like a, a round thing, and you could wear it to a conference, and it will it transcribes everything you say and everything you hear all day, 
okay? Now, this one doesn't have a camera in it. I think there's another one. But to me, this is amazing. We're, you know, we're now becoming cyborgs. I mean, yeah. now it you, gives you perfect memory. It means everyone you meet at that conference, you can go back into your chat GPT database and go, who is that guy that I had that conversation about, you know, the new Web3 social platform? What did he say about this? And where did he say he, you know, lived or whatever it was? So now we always remember everything. Because I don't know about you, but my brain can be like a sieve. You know, I'm really good at faces, but I'm terrible at names sometimes. I'm actually terrible at faces. And it puts me in embarrassing situations. <laughs> so I have to meet someone a few times for, for them to register. It's yeah. Amazing things and so yeah, you know, things are changing because everyone's getting used to the fact that they're getting recorded all the time. So you're using this assistant here. I'm using one too. But guess what? Mine runs locally on my desktop and you don't even know that you're being recorded. Okay. Now people are, oh, GDPR and all this sort of, I don't care to be honest. But I have been using this. For the last three months in a new job that I'm in where I'm doing partnership and I'm speaking to investors and, you know, you're speaking to dozens and dozens of people every day and you're you're trying to remember everything, you're trying to write notes, you're trying to be present and pay attention on the call. It's a nightmare. Now what I do is I record and transcribe everything, I stick it into ChatGPT and I have a database of every call I've had and I ask it at the end to spit out the notes and I tell it what kind of... Notes I want. I put that into the CRM so everyone else could see it. And then I can go in and go, oh, who is that guy that said this? Or what What did we discuss? Okay, what I, I got to ask, what are you using for your CRM? Uh, Monday. Monday what? Monday.com. It's okay. like a, a small. Yeah, it's, it's called Monday.com. I mean, you got Salesforce, which is expensive. You got HubSpot, which is good. Beauty. Monday.com is reasonably simple. I quite like it, actually. I It's what the company use. I'd never... But, used it before. Colin, how are you so so sophisticated? Why are you so smart? I'm what happened? I'm just a giant nerd and I spend all of my time uh surfing the internet, you know, reading Reddit and various other things. I'm just really, really interested and passionate. And so here's the thing. When ChatGPT came out, I posted on LinkedIn that very day and I went this is the most transformational technology I have ever seen in my life, and it's going to change the world. And, like, I don't really post on Facebook anymore, but I, I kind of posted to my dad. I was like, pay attention to this. And I sent a message to all the sort of young people in my life. Like, I have um, I have a couple of nephews and nieces, and I have uh, a couple of people who uh, do some part-time work for me. And I sent them all, and I said, you need to get on top of this because this is the next thing. And I, 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 want, I, I really wanted to... I wanted to get involved. So the next piece of my story, Gordon, is um, I worked with a friend of mine to build a, he, he he had some metaverse technology and it was metaverse, but really about the characters. You know, it was 3D virtual avatars with motion capture and he was using it for music and live events, DJs, all that sort of stuff. So I went to him and I went, his name is Sam. I said, Sam, get that character, bolt chat GPT underneath it and all of a sudden, we've got a 3D avatar that you can have a conversation with, but it can understand stuff. And now you can sell it to a brand or a business as a SaaS solution, pile all their data, train all their data into it. And now you can have a customer service rep who you're going to be able to talk to immediately. No waiting on hold. He's going to understand everything you say, and you're going to understand him because he's not from Bangladesh, okay? And, um, you know, you're going to be able to spend as much time as you possibly want with him getting your problem sorted. And if he can't solve your problem, at least the next person that has come across, he will have generated absolutely perfect notes for that. And this is going to solve customer service. Now, I'm not the first person in the world to have this idea. There's lots of other people out there kind of doing it. And I, funnily enough, met another person, another uh, uh, Irish person doing exactly the same thing. I believe... What, what, what are the odds? Unless you're yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah. Um... And I just believe that in, you know, three years, uh, uh, maybe maybe sooner, we're just going to, how do I say, the, the, the primary method of interacting with companies, brands, will be AI first. That's how it's going to work. You will, you will literally um, start off by talking to their AI. And it will be trained on everything you can imagine. So if you want product information, if you want customer support, 
if you just want to, you know, a chit chat about their brand, if you want to know a little bit more about how to use a product, if you want a device, if you want competitive, you're just going to be talking to AI from now on. So, you know, right now, if you called up or, or went on a website and suddenly this, this sort of geeky looking character, you'd be like, okay, this is a bit weird. I'm having a conversation with a computer, but we're all going to get used to that real quick. And you know what? I believe we will prefer talking to AIs than humans in certain situations because they're going to get... I think that's right. I I think also just to to avoid the prompts of press one for this, press seven for this. Sorry. Yeah. Can you you please repeat? Do you you bank with MBD? Say again? Do you bank with Emirates MBD? Okay, so they have this Eva, and and she, you talk to her, and then you're like, "Tell me what your problem." She's like, "Tell me what your problem is," and she always gets it wrong. It's awful. It's truly terrible. I, they, you know, obviously, uh, I know a f- fair bit because I've spent my life in enterprise software. Swapping out big systems internally like that doesn't happen overnight, and it takes time. But sure. when it does, um, it's going to get really good, and customer service will get solved. Um, the problem, though, is that you know a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Well, that's. That, that I, I did another uh, discussion about that. That uh, I think that's underestimated, if anything. I'm, I'm not quite sure what robotics and AI can't handle. You know, yeah, I, I get to see the battery. I was watching a show this morning in German about how they build the Airbus A350 and the very detailed Germanic approach that they take to this. And I'm looking at this and like, maybe not not this year, not next year, maybe not four years from now, but ten years from now. I don't see how a robot can't do this. Oh, well, this the next thing that excites me a lot, and I talk about this all the time. You probably see my posts. Every couple of weeks, I'll post a new video about the newest robot that's coming out. And the first ones a few years ago were clunky as hell, and they fell over. And yeah, then you had the the Boston Dynamics Athletes that's doing parkour, jumping around the place, but they were, it was all pre-programmed, and it was all bullshit. The new ones that are coming out now, I mean, Elon Musk's one, it's going to be, we're, we're all going to have one. In five year, five to 10 years time, we're all going to have one. And the days of cleaning your house are going to be gone, okay? The days of like cleaning up after uh, cooking are going to be gone. It will also cook for you. You'll probably be able to download a Michelin star meal for, uh, you know, and it'll, and, and it'll cook it. It's going to be revolutionary. I mean, th- there's a great quote that, um, th- that I use, which is, you know, it, 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 look at what Elon Musk is doing. And, you know, the, he's he's created electric cars and he's made them cool and he's made them the best selling car in the world and it's still early. If you think the market for electric cars is big, how big do you think the market is for manual labor? I mean, it's, 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 it's astronomically world. huge. The way Elon Musk says is that right now, you know, our economy is labor translated into value, translated into money. And that's, defined on the amount of people we have, when you can have 10 to 20 billion additional robots doing anything you can think of, and they're going to get so cheap. I mean, there's one right now. It's called uh, Unitree. It's a Chinese company. It's a cool little robot, and it runs around and picks things up, and it operates on auto- autonomously. It's $16,000, okay? If you were to lease that over five years, that works out at a dollar an hour. So now you've got labor for a dollar an hour. So the streets will be perfectly clean all the time, okay? And anything that we want done will be done. Think about how much our government cannot do because it can't afford the labor because you got to pay someone 20 bucks an hour or whatever it is. You know, this is the... So what this will also do is that the quote I always love to use is that I think this is going to do, not not tomorrow or in five years, but in 10 or 20, I think it's going to do to our markets of labor in things like food production, um, hopefully housing, certainly healthcare, and a couple of others. It will do to it what the Gutenberg printing press did to books. Because before the Gutenberg printing press, a book, would have, which was usually the Bible, would have cost several thousand dollars because it had to be hand-scribed by a team of monks. <laughs> And, and and then it goes down to, you know, $5 or whatever it is. So 
the, you know, I think in the short term, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, in the short term, I think we are going to have a really tough time with a lot of jobs lost, and they're going to have to figure that out. But in the long term, it will create a time of utopia and mass abundance uh, and 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 less scarcity of of everything that we want. So you know, then working will become optional, and then the question goes: Is that you know, do we? Uh, well, do, do we find meaning and all that? So some people go, oh, no, we'll go bananas. I don't know. I think if you gave me $20 million tomorrow and said you can never work again, I'd be perfectly happy. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I, I, I've actually had other discussions about whether we're heading into a dystopia where 99% of humanity becomes an extra burden and we're just looking to get rid of them or we go up to heaven. Well, let's skip yeah. out of this conversation. Let's talk about AI agents. Yes, so let's do it. Okay, so um, what, after I built this digital human product, um, I met my current founders. I am chief business development officer of a company called Griffin AI. The Griffin is obviously the mad, mythical creature of the lion and the eagle, and that signifies AI Web3, which I really love. And I just love what they uh, were doing. So what we're doing is we're building, we're bringing AI agents into Web3 to radically increase um, things like user experience for any Web3 DAP, any DEX. So let me go back and explain what an agent is. Mm -hmm. um, an agent is an, a, an autonomous piece of software that can work independently, use tools and work with other agents to complete what I call goal-oriented tasks. Mm -hmm. You give it a goal, it will go and make a report and list multiple tasks that it, uh, that it needs to do. And it will go off and one by one and complete those tasks. It will reason, it will use logic, it will problem solve, and it'll come back to you when that is complete, okay? This is the future of software. And the, the easiest way I could describe it is that you may have seen some, some existing software we all know uh, come out recently with some really cool AI features. And you may have used Photoshop and you may have used Canva. And previously, Photoshop was, you know, a real beast. If you wanted to get good at Photoshop, it takes years and you got a whole lot of learning and you have to use layer masks and all this crap. Nowadays, okay, you've got a picture of you, but there's some dude in the background spoiling the photo. You highlight that, you go remove him and replace it with a tree or whatever, and it's done. That is the example of where we're going with all software. You don't have to know how to do stuff anymore. Uh, you basically just tell your agent and it will go and do it. And we're only beginning to see this coming into the world of software. So Google had one of their big developer events the other day and they're bringing it into Gmail. So let's say, Gordon, you are getting your mansion um, uh, redone and you're getting a whole... Uh... You know what? I like this. Just keep on using that example. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're getting the East Wing redeveloped and you've spoken to like seven or eight different contractors and they've all sent you different stuff. You can go into your agent and go, um, to, you know, go through my Gmail, uh, find out all the different, you know, quotes I've got for all the different stuff and put it in a spreadsheet and compare them all and then go look at their reviews online and pick me the top three and make the recommendations as to who you should who I should pick to get my mansion redeveloped. And that's what it'll do, okay? But in more simple things, you could just go, I want a new gym. It has to be less than two kilometers from my house. It has to be within this budget. And it has to have a swimming pool and a sauna and, you know, uh, Pilates or whatever, okay? Um, you could go, I have to travel to New York. I want a, a nonstop flight, um, but I have to only travel between these times, whatever it is. This is what agents will do, and this is where where, where they're where they're going. And to me, they're just gonna. I call it software 2.0 because agents and generative AI and all of this stuff together. Plus, we'll be able to do it, you know, by picking up some little device like this and just speaking into it. And there's a really cool one called the Open Interpreter Zero One Light that's probably, coming. Probably have a neural link to our agent. Well, guess you want. It's it's coming. Did you see, I posted about this just the other day. For any of your your listeners, please follow me on LinkedIn and go look. Elon Musk did a little press release. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to make a deal with you right now on air. I am going to publish, I'm going to break protocol. I'm going to publish this interview today. Okay. Normally, normally there's a three or four week delay. I'm publishing okay. it today. We're doing it again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to work with you to craft the description doc. 
I'm gonna blast yeah. out on all my channels and yeah, you're gonna, you're, two things. You're gonna invite all your followers to next Tuesday's. Uh, Tech Tuesday. Oh, of course. Yeah, I will do that. Of course, I will and, do that. And for number five, you, you're gonna get on the stage with me, and I'm going to interview. Oh, amazing! Let's do that. Because I love that. Three coming up, I got Max speaking. Uh, on four, I got Adele speaking. Of the yeah. players' brawl, and for five, I'll do you. Okay. Okay. That's that's, super, that, that's our that's our value exchange, and I'm recording that right now with with video and AI. Okay. Let's 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 do it. You know, there's you nothing more I like to do than talk you know. about it. And and you know you 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 know a thing or two about it. But if you look at this Elon Musk interview, you're gonna have this thing implanted in your head, and you're gonna be able to control your computer faster than you can by using your mouse and keyboard. Okay. But imagine this. Then you have a robot and you can telepathically communicate with the robot and get it to go and do things. Or if you had one too, maybe we can communicate without actually speaking like the aliens do apparently that people say when they come down that they don't talk, they just sort of you look at each other. You silent people both verbally and neuro neurologically. Yeah. yeah, but imagine this. Sometimes I have a thought and then I'm trying to get that out into a specific set of words that I might not do very well. You've got to understand my words and then get that into your brain. Maybe it'll just be like brain to brain, so we'll have perfect communication. There, there's. Maybe you won't. You know, we'll we'll all have less <laughs> dystopian terror. <laughs> Maybe we'll all have less fights with our wife because uh, there's uh, less miscommunication, and we're all like on the same. <laughs> or, or we'll have more fights because the thing you don't say but you wanted to say will actually get said. <laughs> Hilarious. Sorry, so negative, let uh, me get back. Let me get back to telling about about, about Griffin. I need a little bit more. Go into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. We're basically a platform for anyone to build, host, and monetize agents on chain for specifically for web three companies. Okay. But what we've done is we've started off by building a couple of agents that we think are most important. And we're out here to solve the problem of DeFi complexity. So I'm sure you bought a few meme coins and you've tried to swap uh, coins on different platforms. It's a nightmare. I mean, I'm in this game, you know, seven, eight years and it hasn't really got any easier. You have to use different swapping platforms and you're using different DEXs and we still have these long strings of characters for, for the, and then you've got to go to Etherscan. It's a nightmare. So what we've built is ChatGPT for your wallet. It's literally that. And I'm going to show you a demo in a minute. Um, Basically, you, you connect your wallet, okay, and it'll show you your balance, and then you can um, you can query it. So you can ask, oh, you know, when, when did Gordon send me $200, or when did that dude send me money on the Solana network, or anything like that? Well, you can send tokens, you can go, you know, go into my address book and pick Gordon's Ethereum wallet and send him, you know, 50 bucks. Or, or uh, now uh, someone sent me some usdc and i want to swap it to usdt erc20 and send it to my binance so i can cash it out DeFi is just so complex and the learning curve is so high the way i look at it is we're building the next generation interface for crypto and DeFi because we're using generative ai and specifically agents via a chat gpt style interface and voice because that's coming too so that you could just get this stuff done. You know what you want done, you want it done. How it's done and going through all those steps and the complexities, that needs to go away. And that's what we're doing. And that that's that's kind of what makes me pretty, pretty you tell you what, Because we're coming up with an hour. I'd love to see your demo. I'm going to show you a demo. I'm putting on my glasses so I can see. Okay. All right. So let me, um, so this is basically it. You know, you know um, this is called our transaction. Oh, I'm, there's no sense I'm going to talk through it, but. You go up and connect, you connect your wallet, okay? You can do it from MetaMask or anything. Um, and then basically what happens is it goes, connects your wallet, goes, this is it. Hold on a minute. And it looks and it goes, right. So we've got, you know, some Ethereum, some USDT, some DAI, and this is your total value. And then it goes, what do you want to do next? Right, we can swap your crypto cryptocurrency. We can stake it. We can bridge it. And bridging can be really hard. Or we can review some transactions. So I'm going to go, right, let's swap. 50% of my Ethereum for USDT and then send it to my Binance account. Now, this is a multi-step process and it's going to walk you through the process each one. So first of all, it's going to go, right, here we are. We're going to swap it. This is the rate. This is the expected USDT. 
Now we're going to go, yes, confirm, and it's going to go, right, we're doing on a Uniswap, this is the gas fee, and uh, the balance has been updated, and then we're going to go, right, proceed. It's going to look into my um, my address book, and it's going to go, right, we're going to send it to Binance, and it's here we're going to tr just transfer $3,000 of that, and we click confirm. And this is, you know, I have to exit, I have to sort of confirm these transactions on my phone, so it's completely secure. We never actually have your funds, all that sort of stuff. And we sign the transaction and then it's done and you can search. And, you know, I won't go through the whole thing, but you can do this for anything. So now we're going to go now bridge 500 USDT onto Polygon. A lot of people wouldn't know how to do that, you know, where they get sent some tokens in a, in on a chain and they don't know. This takes all of this problem away. Um, now it's going to go, right, you know, um, the next one is, right, we're going to do staking, okay? Or we list the last transaction. So now I can go and I can just query the block explorer. Um, I want to stake my Ethereum. It's going to give me the option. It's going to go do the research. Okay, we've got Lido and Clean. you got 3 and 5%. So let's do it. It will calculate how much money you're going to get over a period of 10 days. It'll calculate the penalty. How do you know so much about so much? And how are you <laughs> with it? It's a, it's a real <laughs> question. Um, so explain it to... 50,000 people, I mean, literally 50,000 people are going to see the show, if not more. Explain to them, how do you know so much about so much, and how do you have it usable? Gordon, sometimes I feel like I haven't a clue, and I'm just an idiot trying Yeah, you know, like, there's tons of people I know who will know way more than about crypto than I do. There's tons of people I know who will way, know way more about AI than I do. Yeah, I I know some stuff. I, I, I do know some stuff. I'm just really passionate and interested in it. Some people at the weekend watch football or rugby. You know, I watch AI programs on YouTube, okay? Um, you know, some people sit down and spend all of their time uh, knitting or whatever it is. I just spend all of my time on on AI because I just, I love it. I, I believe that it is, you know, the last technology. You know, we're going to get to a stage now where when AGI gets invented and I follow all of these guys and I write about it again, by 2030... We honestly cannot tell what the world is going to be like after that. Because if we invent this digital god, this super brain that is smarter than all of us combined, well, we never need to invent anything else ourselves because everything will be done with AI. And I find that absolutely fascinating. I do also find it completely terrifying that half the world might be out of jobs and we might not figure out a way to do it. But I also think AI is going to be the answer to that solution. If it wants to. Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, maybe we'll all just live lives like our cats do. You know, they can do whatever the hell they want and they're fed and looked after and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I, I, I'm not too sure. Right. Um, that is the Head Kaczynski Unabomber Manifesto. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I do. Okay. That was, that came out at this point. Maybe someone could say in the comments 10 or 15 years ago. Okay, and he called it, and I don't, I don't know who's read it. You know, I don't approve of his actions, but he is right on point that, you know, we're, if we're lucky, we're a beloved pet. Yeah. But once we give up our thinking, you know, it's, it, you know, it's right where they said the matrix. You know, once you stop thinking well, of yourselves, it became their society and not our society or their civilization. So, well, I mean... There's a great friend of mine called Aragorn. I can't pronounce his surname, but he talks a lot about this. He's a trained historian. He's a futurist. He's a presenter. He basically talks about how I think society will split. And some people will go, I know, I don't want to be part of that. And other people will go, you know, oh, upload me into the matrix and I won't have to worry about anything. And I'll just live a life of, you know, doing whatever the hell I want. You know what I mean? Um, it's more. I, I, I know what you mean, but that's assuming that someone could even formulate that question, as opposed to this thing creeping in from the margins. You know, you you can't fly without your face getting recognized by. It's not optional anymore. You know, then there used to be a place like sit here for your face scan, but now there's yeah, hidden cameras doing it all the time. Yeah, and you're not going to live without flying. You know, yeah, if you're you and me, you will fly. I mean, you're not yeah. going to take a boat everywhere, and even then. Mm. So mm. the, the the idea that we have our act together enough to even pose the question in a way that it's going to be binding, I think, is a stretch. Yeah, so many 
I mean, this is a whole philosophical thing, but yeah. But you but, but you didn't quite answer my question, which is, how do you know so much about so much, and how do you have it usable? Um, I I I guess that's my superpower. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't claim to know so much. I stay up to date with a lot of what's going on in the AI market because that's what it is. It's like you might like football and you know exactly what's going on. I mean, I barely even knew the World Cup was on. I, 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 no, I had no interest, okay? Whereas some people would look at me and go, how is that? Having the hard bit? Yeah, did I? It's simply like, how is it possible that you don't know that? Because I just found out the other day, I was like, oh, England are in the final? Whoa, okay. I was, I'm saying yeah, the World Cup, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, that's how little I know about it, okay? And other people are like this. I just spend all my time because I think it's... I'm fascinated by the future and how it's going to affect us all. My superpower is, is yeah, is being able to explain it in a simple way and making it usable for your average person. And one of the things I've been doing a little bit of is I, the one thing I really love about AI is I go on to like Reddit or something like that and someone releases a tool and I think that tool is really cool. I send him a message and I get him on a call. Because, you know, it's I'm not trying to get the CEO of HSBC bank on. This is a, this is the world of startups. So you can connect with anyone. And I do it. And I reach out and I connect to everyone that I think is cool. And I start. And what I see, Gordon, is that these guys are super smart. They're incredibly intelligent. They, they've built these amazing products. They don't know how to market it or, you know, think about how business operations. I'm a business guy. You know, I'm a sales and marketing guy. So... I try to help a lot of people, you know, and give them some advice as to how they can do it. Because sometimes they create these amazing products, but they've no idea how to get it out there. You know what I mean? And, oh, well, okay, we'll throw on Product Hunt. But what about some programmatic outreach? And I do that. I also teach them how to actually describe it. Because sometimes they've got these amazing products and they don't actually understand the value that it delivers or how their end customer will actually think about using this thing or how it should be described and um, how they need to think about what it will do for them in the long term, how it'll change their job, how it'll save them time, make them money, you know, anything like that. And that that's my superpower. Nice. It's beautiful. Did I, did I cut off your demo? Because it was looking great. No, we pretty much got to the end. All I would say is that, you know, we've created three uh, agents to start, okay? And my my founders, just to tell the background story, okay, my founders are really awesome. Husband and wife team, Olga and Oliver Feldmeyer, they're unbelievably smart and accomplished. Olga has been in crypto 10 years. She was crypto, she was christened the crypto queen of Switzerland by Forbes. Um, she worked for Boston Consulting Group, Barclays, and HSBC at very high levels, so investment banker, etc. Um, but then she worked for Zappo, which sold to Coinbase for, yeah, for they, they sold their um, custody business. And then they built a the first ever licensed and regulated digital assets exchange in Switzerland. And then they floated that on the NASDAQ, which is the first ever one done. So they've, they've had incredible success. And her husband built and architected the whole thing, and they really know it. They, like me, saw the future of AI agents and started to build this. And what Olga wanted to do was provide what a high net worth institutional investor would have in BlackRock, they'd have a team. They have a um, someone to do research. They have someone to do the execute the transactions. And they have someone to manage risk. And that's what we built. So the first one is called Elan, and it is a agent that will basically do your crypto research for you. So if you want to know what is going on in real world assets, you do it. And it's a million times better than ChatGPT. It'll literally develop a proper you know, enterprise grade research report for you. Um, but it'll also answer, answer stupid questions if you want as well in any format, in any language. So we're working with a Korean exchange right now and they're really excited because they can get all the crypto news and all the research in Korean, which they've never been able to do before across the board. The second one is the transaction agent, which I showed you and loves it. Quick interjection. I think, you know, I'm working on my German. I use ChatGPT yeah. as a German tutor. It's, Oh, nice! It is nice. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I love that it can court, it can express similar ideas, but in multiple languages seamlessly. It just flip back and forth. Oh, it's incredible! Annoyingly, I spent a year in in Brazil trying to learn Portuguese, doing a very bad job of it. But that was kind of before uh, ChatGPT really came out. 
And also, you know, the whole live translation thing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing to be able to do it across languages. Um, by the way, translators, they're gone. You know, I I watched a very interesting program on the the team of translators that work in the UN because there's like six official languages. That'll just be replaced. Yeah, you I mean, know. I saw the same YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was one of the big channels. Yeah, and um. So to, to get back to this, so yeah, you, you could basically get anything you want, any crypto research. We have 150 different data sources plugged into the Twitter firehose. So you can now get sentiment analysis. Ooh, tell me what meme coins are ticking off right now so I can get the next, you know, um, dog with hat or Dogecoin or whatever it is and make millions. Um, and then the last one is a risk manager. So it will help you manage your risk. And uh, the story I always tell is I have sent a very large amount of money on the wrong chain accidentally, okay? And yeah, uh, I got it back, thankfully, after seven months, but it was a very large amount of money, okay? And I was hung over, and I was, someone told, I was supposed to swap it, and I just sent it USDT instead of USDT. That will make sure that you don't do that. It will also make sure that you're not sending money to a known spammy or, 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 or you know, dodgy address. Or it'll look at your crypto point. Okay. Okay. They have a breathalyzer where it makes sure you're not drooling. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, you know, that I can imagine that voice from 2001, you know, it's like, call it, don't be angry, but you seem to be inebriated. Yeah. <laughs> Open the pod board, pod board, de- de- pod door, bay pod doors, whatever. I thought to cap you that. Bay. I'm sorry, Dave, but the yeah. conversation will serve them for the pod bay. Hot Bay Doris. Yeah, there we go. Like um, yeah, I mean, this, 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 this is it. This is it. But but anyway, we're doing some really cool stuff. We're building agents that any Web3 company can come onto our marketplace, check out one of the agents, integrate it seamlessly into their application and start helping out. And we got it like dozens of use cases. I mean, I think you, now starting something new, you will have a guide. You will have your own personal agent guide to make sure that you understand the application that you're getting set up. I mean, how annoying is it filling out all those crappy forms and not understanding what you're supposed to be doing? All that'll go away because it it will turn into a conversation. It'll be like sitting down with your, you know, your investment manager, whatever, and they'll just ask you and, you know, they'll integrate into, you'll have your pieces of data and information and they'll all get done for you. So, I'm really excited about the future that we're building and that is happening with AI because, you know, I offered my mother is 80 years of age and she really, really struggles with anything related to technology. And she was like, oh, I was born in a wrong time. You know, I don't like all this internet thing. Oh, even you're going gonna... to leave. Well, what exactly? That's my point is that is that, you know, if if she, in for another five years, she won't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff because you just ask for what you want and it's going to get done. It. Whereas right now she's having to figure out all these difficult processes and things like that of, you know, using the internet or anything like that, which is just completely crazy to her. You know, you know, I, I never thought about it. But it, it my mom's getting up there also. You know, I think we're both lucky to have our moms. The, but to have an AI that takes care of your parent not, mm-hmm. not replacing you, but there, there's so much elder care abuse that know. happens because the caretaker, they're, they're, you don't have a line of interest. And, then, you know, and the, the parent can't necessarily take care of them or can't yeah. really manage them because the whole reason they need help is why they're getting the caretaker. Well, I have another story on this. Do you know uh, a guy called Dustin Plantold? I'm amazingly familiar, but I couldn't say yes. I, I, He's quite I, similar to you in the fact that he does an awful lot of public speaking stuff like that. Very close friend of mine. Okay. And he came to me with an idea. Um, he had it very well fleshed out, but I just sort of uh, a little better. And he is a big storyteller. He has an amazing life history and story to himself. And he was, think about the amount of stories that get lost. Okay. Unless you're a celebrity or a politician or a king or something, your your life memories does not get documented unless you're the one of the 0.0001 people who actually r- r- writes down their memoirs. Right. Well, those days are changing now because now all you need is a microphone and an AI and you can talk and you have a little avatar and you have a conversation and you record all your life stories and they'll be there. They'll be replicated for your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren and... Um, 
hilariously, someone wrote to me the other day, I'm being now turned into an AI avatar that you could go and have a conversation with. And so this is the thing. Shout out to another guy called Shane I spoke to. There's a, a company called Sensei. They do exactly the same. It's digital or immorta immortality. We'll be able to take all of the, all of your stories, all of your public speaking, all of your podcasts, all of, all of my writing, and it will be, you know, digitized forever so that, you know, people will be able to essentially have conversations with me and you long after we're gone because it will understand our personality. It will have all of the data of everything we say, but you know, you can then go in and tell the stories from your college days or how you met your wife in all that sort of detail. And now, you know, things won't be lost anymore. And I think that's really cool. Have you, have you heard of the integrated information theory of, of consciousness? No. I, the, the idea that is that once things start working with information in certain ways, they attain degrees of consciousness. Okay. It's not saying your computer is, is conscious. It's that it has a, a degree of consciousness. What's that? It yeah, undergoes certain processes. And when you're talking about what you're just talking about, I'm thinking about IIT and there's th those do those digital doppelgangers that survive you and, and can anticipate how you would have responded based on their language model of you, I, I think yeah. are creeping up on a spark of consciousness. Okay. This is that. Oh. Yeah, this, this would need another hour almost. And um, it's, it's, I, I don't think me personally, I'm the best person to talk about this, but I'm going to make a recommendation to you. Okay. Someone you need to have on your podcast next is a buddy of mine. And he's got a cool story because he was in Pink Floyd. Uh, he was the saxophone player uh, in 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 Pink Floyd. His name is Scott Page. As a, as a, and he if, if I got Roger Waters on the show, I think he and I would be talking about a different topic. <laughs> yeah, no, he, but, but um, Scott, Scott's favorite conversation topic is consciousness. And he goes into way, way more detail on this than I can. L love, but love, yeah, I mean, to come, love, I'll... I'll let's wrap up with you because... Yeah, we, I think we needed a follow up show, but if, I'll have you on stage on number five. So. Yes, let's we, do it. If you, if you leave the audience with something, and then, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna pump this out today. So make, okay, make we can. Put, you want me to leave the audience with something? Um, give, give us a give a give us a wisdom ball or something to. Like. I would. I I I I just advise everyone to be as curious. Uh, as possible with everything that's going on in AI right now, because I really believe the world is about to change more in the next five to seven years than we can possibly imagine. And we need to be prepared for it. I mean, I wrote this thing the other day and I said, I've said, I'm sitting here in a restaurant and I'm looking around and 99% of people that I can see have absolutely no idea what's about to happen in the future. It's almost as if aliens are coming to Earth and only I know. And no one else knows. And when they arrive, the world is going to change, you know, orders of magnitude. And they have no fucking idea. Whereas I know it's about to happen and that makes me feel kind of cr crazy and special. But I would advise everyone to keep up to date into what's going on. Easiest way to do that is to follow me. I kind of tell you everything you need to know. Um... But I also do think that, you know, what was that saying, may you live in interesting times? Huh. We couldn't possibly live in more interesting times. There was a great guy on, I think it was Rogan or something the other day, who basically said he be absolutely believes we're living in a simulation because what are the chances over, you know, millions of years that we're living now when we're about to get this, you know, digital super brain and God uh, that, yeah, I mean... Um, uh, it, we're about to experience the most incredible thing that's ever happened in the history of the world. So that blows my mind, and that's what I want to leave the audience with. Wow, powerful! Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put all your social media in the description post, and I'm gonna tell everyone to subscribe. Yeah, yes. it was great talking to you, Gordon. This is amazing. All right, I'm gonna stop the it's a fun you. shot. There's nothing more I love to do than this with people who are you know equally interested and excited about it. You, you, you got me jazzed up. Come on, man. All right. Go. I mean